Hello, my name is Brandon McDonald, and welcome to part two of a Corel speed paint tutorial. Again, it's sped up because it's a few hours of work. I don't speak very much in this video because it's mostly detail work. To reiterate from part one of this painting, I'm only using the Concept Art Jitter Smooth Brush, the Cover Pencil, and the Airbrush. I found this photo of a metal cup online to use as reference for reflective metals. I want to make his metals slightly more polished. And I have a belt photo reference. I think this lighter blue background works better for the character than the dark reddish purple background. Here I finally had the sense to make the recent brushes window visible. This is an incredibly useful window. I'm starting to get into the details. This zooming in is done from video editing. I still was zoomed out and able to see the entire character while painting. like the way some people paint women's eyelids, how they have that kind of highlight stripe down the middle. Here's an example of what I'm talking about. This is a photo, of course, but I've seen this look accentuated before, particularly in portraits of females. It's a good idea to figure out what your focal points are for your painting. For this painting, the focal points are his face, crown, hands, and maybe staff orb. Everything else can be less detailed, especially the background elements. Obviously, if you want, you can make the entire painting full detail and spend a lot of time on every square inch of the image. But it's not really necessary to spend a lot of time on parts that the viewer will barely look at. It's up to you, of course, and how much time you'd like to put into it. I'm just
just continuing to paint with the overhead light in mind. I've drawn him in a cave and didn't think about where the light could be coming from. Maybe they have some soft purplish lights strung up in the cave. I don't know. Here's when I decided to fix the secondary lighting. I made him kind of side or backlit from the start with no thought of where the light is even coming from. But now I'm making it look more like the orb from the staff is the secondary light source. Because the rock behind him certainly isn't glowing to illuminate his backside. <laughs> Continuing to fix the secondary light source, making it appear like it's coming from above, where the orb is, as opposed to light that's randomly coming from the right side. When drawing hands, use your own hand for reference if you need. If you're trying to draw the hand that is your drawing hand, flip your painting so you can use your vacant hand as reference. There are also plenty of reference photos online that you can use if you are an amputee or disabled. I wish I had more to talk about and explain, but all I'm really doing is continuing to use the same three brushes to clean him up. I'm trying to make the shapes look right, push the lights and darks, make it look fun and interesting style-wise, and make the lighting consistent. That's really all I'm doing.
the final product. After a little bit of work off video, all I really did in post was put a little bit of a yellow-orange overlay over the top of him to brighten him up a bit. 